But there are situations where it is challenging to sleep longer, stay, you know, to sleep in, to do, to all, all these things, because maybe you're a new parent, right? And you have to wake up and your sleep will be compromised. There's absolutely nothing you can do because of it. There's other things as well, right? I mean, jet lag, things like that. So there is another way to improve metabolic health, even when you're not sleeping optimal. And that takes us full circle back to the beginning of the talk with high intensity interval training. So high intensity interval training has shown to be a very robust way to um, improve metabolic health when you are sleep restricted. So there's um, been studies that have shown that high intensity interval training, if you do three sessions over five days of also being sleep restricted, so sleeping four hours less a night, you can still improve your circadian rhythm, you can still improve your glucose tolerance, your mitochondrial function, and um, biomarkers of mitochondrial function and mitochondrial biogenesis. And, you know, I mean, this is important because, again, the glucose regulation, so you're doing that high intensity interval training. Well, part of the way that, that high intensity interval training, I mean, part of the way that sleep restriction impairs glucose regulation is it makes your muscle less responsive to glucose. And so what is high intensity interval training doing? It's doing the exact opposite, right? It's increasing GLUT4 transporters and it's bringing the glucose into your muscle. So you're really countering some of that negative effect of poor sleep on, on, on your muscle. Even doing high intensity interval training before you know you're gonna be sleep restricted. So I got on my Peloton yesterday. I went hard right before I got on my flight from California. I knew I was gonna lose some sleep because it's three hours ahead in Florida. At doing doing high-intensity interval training before you're going to be sleep restricted still mostly rescues the high, blu high blood glucose and acute insulin resistance that's caused by sleep restriction. So yet again, just really important um, with respect to the tools that we have at our disposal to help mitigate some of the effects of you know, chronic sleep loss or even acute sleep loss, both. A lot of those protocols, again, are the ones we've discussed, the Tabata, the Wingate, conventional one minute on, one minute off, and the Norwegian four by four HIT protocol. A lot, of, a lot of HIT protocols out there that people can do, or you just do your exercise snacks as well. I mean, that also has been shown to increase um, glucose homeostasis, as I mentioned, the 10 body weight squats. And I do wanna mention one last study before we end on time. And that is, again, I, there's lots of, of data out there to be harvested from the, the UK biobank data. And there's been studies that have identified people that sleep fewer than seven hours or greater than nine hours a, a night are, have, have a higher all-cause mortality. However, if those people are physically active and they're getting and they're meeting the guidelines for physical activity, 75 minutes a week of intense, vigorous exercise, or 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity exercise. They do not have a higher all-cause mortality. They have the same mortality risk as someone that's getting good sleep. Yet again, exercise can forgive a lot of sins and there's no reason to not do a time efficient type of high intensity interval training workout. It's, it's you know, time efficient, it's easy, exercise snacks. I mean, there's, there's all the evidence there. We just have to implement it, make it part of your hygiene. Like you brush your teeth every morning, you do your hit.